a pioneering team of engineers is digging deep on something massive. Now it's show time. We can hear you loud up here. They're attempting to build an innovative three and a half billion dollar circular railway right underneath the heart of an historic capital city. Starting to roll now. With 17 brand new stations, 39 driverless trains. To build the biggest construction project in the city for 400 years, the team must battle toxic soil and catastrophic floods and collapsing earth. Time-wise, we're right on the limit. No, failure is not an option. This uniquely challenging underground railway ranks in a league of ambitious new engineering wonders that are bigger, faster, taller, and more advanced than anything ever constructed before. This is the inside story of the extraordinary challenge of building these giants. The historic city of Copenhagen lies on the east coast of Denmark. Its spectacular architecture and sights attract millions of visitors each year. But this creates a problem for the city's population. The capital's roads are congested. Copenhagen's 1.2 million residents have to battle constant gridlock that blocks major roadways. The city does have a metro, but built in 2002, it was not designed to cope with today's peak demand. So that's why, in 2011, beneath the center of this historic city, this team of engineers begins building a trailblazing new underground railway. It's a pretty challenging and important project because it is supposed to get 90% of the population of Copenhagen. Constructed in a circle underneath the city, the new railway, called City Ringen, will bring the majority of the population within a 10-minute walk to a station, doubling the metro's capacity. The man tasked with constructing the railway's congestion-busting tunnels is Valerio Violo. The city of Copenhagen is, uh, is looking at us. It is uh, following the progress of the construction now on a daily basis. Uh, they really want us to finish and to get the, uh, the metro up and going. So there's a, there's a kind of a strong pressure on our shoulders. Building a project of this magnitude directly beneath the heart of this historic capital is no simple task. There are a lot of safety challenges from underground works that come together, provides us with a lot of risk and hazard that you don't normally get in a normal construction of a building, for example. In just eight years, this is the massive railway Valerio and the Copenhagen Metro team must somehow build. The plan is to construct 17 brand new subterranean stations that will circle the city in a ring. Each station will be unique, built to reflect its surrounding area. Underground at track level, Platform edge doors will separate commuters from the 19 miles of freshly dug tunnels that will transport commuters around the city in minutes. 39 innovative driverless trains will run through the tunnels. Each train will have the capacity to shuttle 280 passengers between stations every 90 seconds. The new metro will be able to transport around 70 million passengers a year when it's complete. It's going to be a big challenge because of the city itself is relatively small and congested. So there are challenges ahead, uh, challenges that everybody's willing to take on and on board and face. Building the vast underground metro in this jam-packed capital city involves a series of key challenges. The team needs to excavate 17 massive holes 
right in the heart of the city. Inside them, they will build the sunken stations. To connect up each station, Valerio and his team must excavate three million tons of earth to create the two circular tunnels for the trains. Hot on the heels of the tunnelers, a team of track layers must position, concrete, and weld together over 19 miles of rail track. Engineers must also construct and test the fleet of 39 new driverless trains. One of the team's greatest challenges will be to construct the stretch of tunnels that must pass directly underneath Copenhagen's historic central train station while it remains open. The first task is to construct the tunnels. These must be built before work inside the stations can continue. We have uh, 36 months to, to complete the, the tunneling. There is always the possibility to make a mistake in tunneling and we need to be focused and to maintain our concentration. As the son of a geologist, Valerio is no stranger to the underground. He has over 21 years experience on mining projects around the world. But the city Ringen tunnels pose his biggest challenge to date. I never had uh, such a big project to manage and such a big company to manage all by myself. Uh, this one was a pretty challenging task. <laughs> To excavate the 19 miles of tunnels on time, the team is using a fleet of innovative digging vehicles called tunnel boring machines, or TBMs for short. We have four machines uh, working at the same time in this moment under Copenhagen. Each TBM is 344 feet long and is a mobile tunnel building factory. At the front, a giant 19-foot rotating cutter head claws away at the earth. The excavated material moves away from the cutter head on a conveyor. It is loaded into carts for a small train to tow away. A robot arm installs precast concrete segments to line the freshly dug tunnel tubes. It takes six segments to make up a complete tunnel ring 4.6 feet wide. Hydraulic pistons then push the machine forward so the excavation process can begin again. On average, each tunnel digging machine can install 18 rings a day as it snakes its way under the city. Tunnelers have been digging Copenhagen's tricky sea level geology nonstop since 2013. The machines claw away up to 3,000 tons of earth, sand, and super hard rock every day. They dig out in line an average of 3.7 miles of tunnel per year. But this is a crucial day for the tunneling team. One of the four machines is burrowing its way north to what will eventually become Trianglin Station. Now it must break through into the half-built station structure itself so that the tunnels and stations connect. Claudio Ramazzini is in charge of this critical part of the operation. This is the break-in side of the station. Basically, as you can see here, here we have the concrete block, and uh, inside of this concrete block, we have one of our big uh, tunnel boring machine and is about to get in the station. But that's easier said than done. To prepare for the machine's breakthrough, engineers have built a giant concrete block at the precise point where it will enter. The block acts as a plug to stop earth and groundwater flowing into the station as the machine eases through. Without this block, the pressure from the surrounding water in the ground could cause the wall around the machine to collapse, creating catastrophic damage. But already, this worst case scenario is becoming a reality.
in Copenhagen. Engineers are busy building the city's biggest construction project in 400 years, the three and a half billion dollar City Ringen Metro. At the moment, the tunnel boring machine is about 35 feet behind the block. If you get closer to the wall, uh, you can uh, hear the noise of the cutter head cutting the concrete. For Claudio and the team, the stakes are high. We have to do the break-in on time to stay on schedule, so when the teams here in Triangle Station can finish building the station. Paul Evans heads down to make the final checks. Some of the concerns we have when the actual TBM literally breaks through that concrete is the possibility of debris flying quite a distance and injuring people. But with the tunneling machine now just 16 feet away from breaking through, the team hits a problem. Okay. Groundwater starts flooding into the station through a gap in the top of the concrete block, threatening the entire project. We had a problem. We had a water inflow, so we had to stop the excavation. We need to get this fixed quickly so we can proceed with the operation, uh, the breakthrough operations. We don't want delay. Groundwater is flowing through a gap between the outer edge of the tunnel and the platform ceiling. Unstopped, it could catastrophically flood the tunnels. To stem the flow, Valerio's team must drill a ring of holes through the tunnel segments. The holes need to be at the precise point where the tunnel meets the station's exterior wall. Then, they'll inject a special type of resin through these holes. The resin solidifies on contact with water and should form a watertight seal around the tunnel to plug the leak. Inside, the station engineers begin battling the flood water. We are going to fix it uh, by pumping out the water uh, by two big pumps, and also we have a truck on surface uh, sucking the water from the truck level. It takes a frantic few days working around the clock to inject the resin and make the station watertight. With the leak fixed, and with just over two feet to go, the team prepares to break through, hoping the resin plug holds. This is one of the most important part of the project. Everybody's waiting. Everybody nervous and want to see the cut red coming through the block. The station team gathers to witness the milestone. It's an anxious time for workers. And I've been waiting for four years for this switching to arrive on this side. Okay, now I'm going to call the pilot and say to him, restart and break in. Finish. No more delays. <laughs> this is uh, the moment of the truth. happy now because we are with the tunnel boring machine. Uh, we have done the, the break-in, so great moment. Success. The tunneling team breaks through and joins up with the station crew for the first time. But for Claudio, the hard work doesn't stop here. All the pressure uh, gone now, just for a few hours, and then uh, again pressure because we have to push the, the tunnel boring machine at the opposite, uh, at the other side of the station. With the tricky breakthrough behind them, the four TBMs pick up the pace. I can see this too. Yes. The machines chew through nearly 3,000 tons of dirt and stone every day as they burrow underneath the city. 
But getting rid of all this excavated earth is another huge challenge for Valerio's team. The TVN can build a lot of rings per day. Now, considering the distance, we are doing 18 rings per day in an average. After the machine builds each ring, the excavated earth is carried away from the cutter head and dumped into a series of carts. Once full, a small train pulls them out to be emptied. Any delay getting rid of the waste could hold up the entire project. If we are not able to empty these mock pits, it will, of course, have an immediate impact on the TBMs. This whole operation is vital for whole the project because we have TBMs running 24 hour a day, six days a week. But Copenhagen's unique geology creates a problem. One of uh, the big challenges was mining through contaminated ground. We had benzene, carbon monoxide, and ammonia. We were not expecting it. An old industrial part of the city has left behind a toxic legacy. This makes the task of managing the excavated earth even tougher. I'm taking some samples to be sent off uh, for lab testing. Every day, Christian's team must sample a trainload of muck for traces of contaminants. But he can't afford to hold up tunneling. Both of these samples are together with the muck sent for analysis every day while the TBM is mining. Workers empty the dirt and rubble from these carts into temporary pits while they wait for the test results. Every day we get the decisions from the authorities and then we instruct the worksite manager how they should organize the deposit and which smog pit is clean and which smog pit is contaminated. It takes 24 hours for the results of each test to come through. The team anxiously awaits the results. Engineers are busy tunneling underneath the city of Copenhagen to create a massive new subway. But they must find out if the soil is toxic. Hi, Klaus. Hi. Where is the muck going today? It's clean? It's a clean muck. OK, thank you very much. All the muck today is clean, and it has, it's going to be disposed off to the clean soil facility. Uh, maybe the situation is different tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. Each truckload of muck travels five miles north of the city to this unique facility. This is no ordinary waste dump. Workers here are using the clean soil to extend the city out into the sea. They're filling in an area of the waterfront over a half square mile to create space for a new port and parkland. The area is going to increase the area of Copenhagen by 1%. The toilet area where we are right now is going to be used for the public in Copenhagen for fishing, for having picnics, and for doing some kind of playing and whatever people like to do. Today it's a bit cold, I'm freezing, but uh, when the summer is coming, maybe we can take a swim in the sea and uh, do some uh, sun bathing. Underground, the tunneling team is still working as fast as they can. Each time the team breaks through into a station, they face the same battle to drag the 700-ton tunneling machine through the platform so they can continue digging. Everybody wants to see the machine come in, but then a lot of people want to see it leave again because there's a lot of work that has to continue from there. There are deadlines to meet. The highly specialized track layers are hot on their heels. Valeria and his team with the tunnel boring machine are furiously chomping through virgin dirt. Our goal is to be as close as possible behind his team so that we could all finish this project on time. We have two tunnels, 17 stations. We've got a deadline. We need to achieve this fast. Paul and his team need to position the track, secure it with concrete, 
and join each section together with absolute precision. It's no small feat. To help them install each piece in the right spot, they are using an innovative machine. This rail-laying gantry crane is fitted with precision-grabbing arms to pick up and position the flexible pieces of rail. There's a lot of skill involved in picking them up in the right position to minimize deflection. They do move around quite easily. They have to because the tunnel has so many twists and turns it needs that flexibility. The flexible rail helps the track layers snake a path through the curved tunnels. With uh, curvature in one direction, we also come across the problem of one rail getting longer or creeping ahead of the other. So every so often we need to perform uh, a cut with a quick cut saw to make sure that we're back on level pegging. They must level up the ends of the rail so that the next set of tracks joins up smoothly. Any bumps or misalignments could derail a train. This is definitely by far the most important stage of the track laying process. Paul's team uses a plumb line to help them push or pull the rails into position with pinpoint accuracy. Without these sorts of accuracies, there's a chance that the train could derail. And if my head's sort of moving around like this, I may as well catch a bus. It needs to be smooth. Perfect. With the tracks perfectly in place, the team must now lock them into position with concrete. That's easier said than done. To secure the next 50 feet of track, they need to pump around 20 tons of wet concrete six stories down to a mixer in the tunnels and feed it to the rail crew before it sets. It's a long distance in a short amount of time. 90 minutes is the time that we have to ensure that the concrete is still in a condition that we can use to lock the sleepers into their final position. It takes over 40 minutes just to fill each mixer. There's an enormous amount of pressure on these guys. 90 minutes is not a long time. The load reaches the concreting crew with just minutes to spare. Time-wise, we're right on the limit. These guys have to work quick. Time is critical. The men in white just performing the final concrete finishing works by hand. For this section of tunnel, they finished in time. Today, a good day. If we get 80 metres done, only 31 and a half thousand metres to go. While work on both the tunneling and track laying picks up pace, 1,200 miles away in Italy, Engineers are building the railway's 39 new driverless trains. Here, the team assembles each of the train's three individual carriages, installs the doors and windows, and connects up the complex electrical systems that will provide the driverless train controls. Once built, each train is shipped to this test facility where Davide Marandola's team adds the finishing touches. All of the trains are my baby. So every time that uh, come a new vehicle from the factory, I approach and uh, then uh, until I love it. Today is a very important day because we are going to test a new vehicle. For the first time, we'll go and we'll reach the test track. So it will be so important to get all the data to evaluate how the behavior of the vehicle. Hidden at the other end of the facility is City Ringen's high-speed test track, where each driverless train must pass a series of critical tests. Today, technicians plug into Train 20's computer controls to track its performance. We are going to test uh, brake test and uh, acceleration test. 
we are going to verify the situation of the vehicle we receive, if it's uh, the good uh, uh, or we have to make an intervention. So we have to find out today. Davide will push this train to its limit. It must accelerate and brake within a specified time and distance. It's crucial because uh, we need to provide the train that uh, is reliable. And now we are going to the test track. If this train fails, it could delay work on the entire fleet. As part of Copenhagen's ambitious $3.5 billion city ringen, engineers are testing a new fleet of driverless trains. But for this crucial test, a driver must sit in the hot seat. Michael, can we get the, the forcing already? Yeah, so the acceleration is uh, quite strong. Okay, now you can stop. Now for the brake test. We are starting, then when we reach max speed, we make max service brake. Each train must be able to stop completely in less than 180 feet. Okay, now you can stop. B3, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. After a day on the test tracks, it's the moment of truth. Has this train passed both tests? We can uh, evaluate increasing of the speed, so this yellow line from 0 to 40. The acceleration was uh, 1.25, so has been a good, uh, reached in good way. The braking data shows that it stopped after just 160 feet, under the target. We are is in good condition, the train, yeah. This train heads back to the base, having passed with flying colors. But with 19 more trains to put through this test, there's still a lot more work for Davide's team to do. We'll start the next train, next job. New adventure, every train. <laughs> As trains begin to line up, ready to enter service, Paul's track team is working 24-7 to install the rails. With a weld every 60 feet and over 19 miles of tunnel, it's a relentless battle. Thousands and thousands of welds. Paul and the team plan to use an ingenious and super fast welding technique to stop them from falling behind. They are preparing a fiery chemical reaction to superheat a mixture of aluminum and iron oxide that creates a mix of molten metal. This liquid metal should fill the gap between the rails in mere minutes. The advantage is the ability to join two unique bits of rail, creating one seamless stretch of railway line. Now it's showtime. The chemical reaction is instantaneous. The liquid metal flows from the base of the drum into the mold. Any excess drains into these pans on either side. It's critical that we wait the right amount of time before removing the molds. If we remove the molds too early, the metal will run and fall out of the joint. If we remove it too late, we run the risk of having uh, molten metal stuck to the track, which is very hard to remove. Once ready, they break the mold off and leave the weld to cool overnight. Here we can see a uh, thermit rail weld that was completed last night. We can see that the rail gap that we witnessed earlier is perfectly filled with the molten metal solution. It's had an initial grind and it's ready for the final grinding later tomorrow. One rail weld completed, many thousands to go. 
The super fast welding helps Paul's team join around 590 feet of track each night. Across town, the team is gearing up to tunnel under Copenhagen's historic central station. This iconic station was built in 1911, and now 100,000 commuters use this crucial hub every day. It's really important that we don't do any disruption to this because this is the main hub for central Copenhagen and all the trains heading out to other parts of Denmark. So we cannot afford to cause any disruption to this station at all. For the ring of tunnels to reach their final station, engineers need to tunnel a mere 49 feet below this busy hub. No tunnels have come this close to Copenhagen's oldest station before. And digging such huge holes so close to this historic brick wall building, if not done right, could cause catastrophic damage and close this international hub for months. Pulling this off without a hitch will be a huge challenge. In Copenhagen, engineers are constructing the city ring and metro, but they're trying to figure out how to tunnel underneath the city's iconic central station without causing it to collapse. Well, where we are at the moment is right next to Copenhagen's main central station. Just beyond that fence line is where the TBMs will come through eventually, passing under the existing rail line. The team is so nervous about digging this section of tunnel that they have a special crew that monitors the operation 24-7. It rests on the shoulders of Spiros Latsineri to make sure the old station doesn't start collapsing. We are in the center of this city, and it is uh, very important that we monitor uh, what is going on on the surface and on the subsurface. The buildings we are passing uh, below are very old, without foundations, most of them. So it is very important that we control very well our uh, works, and we know that we do not create any damages that could be severe. The plan is for workers to excavate the tunnels underneath the historic station. There's a real risk that the digging could disturb the earth around the tunnel boring machine, causing the soil to shift and triggering the buildings above ground to tilt. To monitor for this, Spiros and his team have installed an ingenious network of lasers and prisms all over the station to check for any ground movement. The laser fires a beam every 30 minutes to record the position of the prisms. If the spot the laser beam hits suddenly changes, this means that the prism has moved and the system sends an alert back to the base. I'm watching very closely all data from TBM and all monitoring data gathered from the systems. So if there is a problem, I will be the first one to, to know and understand it. Inch by inch, the tunnel boring machine slowly snakes its way under the main station. It's like the, the foam and I'm just putting to the screw conveyor. It's a tense time for the tunneling crew as they approach the point where they will make the final breakthrough next to the main station. Okay, guys, uh, welcome. It's the moment they've all been working towards. The main focus point today is going to be the final breakthrough. So, of course, it's not just a final breakthrough, it's the last breakthrough of the entire project. We've been part of this project now for the last three years, and it all comes to this point when it breaks through. We need to keep our focus on the safe distance for the spectators. And especially with this breakthrough, there's going to be a lot of people that want to get in there. There'll be a lot of eyes on us. And in that respect, we want to make sure that we do this, and it's a nice, clean breakthrough and without incident. Okay. Thank you. But just as the tunnelers reach the halfway point under the station, some alarming readings alert Spiros's team to a problem. There are two points that are recording settlements close to the alert limit due to probably the TBM passage, which are above the alert limit, but still they are close to that, so we'll have to, to check it that it remains as it is and does not record more settlements, so it would be better that we have a team down uh, to check it immediately. The alert couldn't have come at a more inconvenient time. Spiros sends a team of surveyors to investigate. If the settling earth 
is causing the platform's roof pillars to sink. We had some coins moving and uh, we're double checking to see uh, if they continue to move or if they are staying in the same level because the tunnel boring machine is right underneath us here. So we'll double check if it's all right. A lot of things could happen here. There's a very big uh, arch over us. So if something happens with some of the pillars here, if part of the tunnel starts collapsing or something like this, uh, we will know it before it gets critical. They check all 60 prisms in the station, dodging commuters who are oblivious to the massive machine passing right beneath their feet. Some days I can actually feel the boring machine moving under my feet, like uh, vibrating uh, the ground. Now I'll transfer the calculations from today. We can then see what was measured and the two points that we measured uh, that was close to the alarm levels are about the same height that they were last time. So they stopped moving down. Everything is stable and everything is where it's supposed to be. The data confirms that the ground has stopped moving, at least for now. So the tunnelers are clear to press on with the last push towards the finishing line and the final breakthrough into the new City Ringin station. I think we should have them at this point here rather than the, the bottom level. In my opinion, it's a bit too close. So we have that little bit more extra space. Hundreds of VIPs and officials are due to arrive to witness this momentous event. Paul can't afford anything to go wrong. So tomorrow everything's going to be nice and clean and ready for the final breakthrough. OK, I have no problems. The team has enlisted some extra special help to make sure the final breakthrough goes off without a hitch. Yeah, that's the statue of the Santa Barbara. She's the patron saint of miners. So wherever we go, uh, we would like to have the, the statue there as a good luck symbol for our mining to keep us safe wherever we may be underground. She's brought us luck all this way, so why shouldn't she bring us luck for the final breakthrough? After three years of construction work, the day of the final tunneling breakthrough finally arrives. Everything has been leading up to this crucial event. The final act. Today is the end, at least of the tunneling operation. We're all ready, we're all set up, ready to go. We're just waiting for the last of the visitors and guests to arrive, and then uh, we'll get the all, the all clear and we'll be ready to push. In Copenhagen, engineers are coming upon the final stages of completing the $3.5 billion city ringin. The last major milestone is breaking down the walls beneath the city's historic central station. With a subterranean feast complete with champagne and red carpet all laid out, the pressure grows on the tunneling team. There's a big buzz in the air and everyone's excited to see this happen. Welcome to the last break-in of the project. We're gonna go through a couple of safety issues. Inside the tunneling machine, Sybil Jensen gears up for the final push. Sybil, Sybil, this is Paul, radio check over. Hey Paul, this is Sybil and TBM4. We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, good, everything looking good your side? Yes, we checked the pumps, everything is ready. Thank you, stand by. Everything's good to go on their side. Everything's uh, how it should be. Let's go. It's starting to roll now. Okay. We can start pushing now. Where is the... Piano, 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 piano.
with one final nudge. 19 miles of city ring and tunnels are complete and the 17 new stations finally connect. For Valerio, Paul, and the whole team, it's the end of an extraordinary underground journey. <laughs> oh, brilliant, fantastic, extremely happy. For Copenhagen, it means that you can walk from here all around town and come back from that direction. It's uh, the first big, huge step toward the completion of the metro. It's been a massive achievement for everybody involved. Everybody's so happy. Now, today is just celebration, and they're just uh, celebrating what they did. But just one final breakthrough remains to mark this huge achievement. Torta. Have you seen this cake? The last tunneling breakthrough marks a key milestone in this ambitious three and a half billion dollar project. All the major civil engineering work is now complete. The team has poured more than one million tons of concrete, excavated more than three million tons of earth, and installed 135,000 tunnel segments. We've done our job and we've done it very well. It's huge, it's very big. They really need to take time to process it. Over the coming months, the Copenhagen Metro team will continue to lay the last sections of track, install the stations so the ticket halls can open, and prepare the 39 trains for operation. When this is all finished, I want to come back and take the first ride on the Metro. Oh, I'm definitely going to do that. City Ringen will soon ease the pressure on Copenhagen's roads and help keep this historic capital city running well into the next century.